Hello everyone, uh, welcome back. And I have a book haul here from uh, Book Outlet when they had their $7.99 sale. It's Canadian prices. I think I just got one book from Amazon and the rest are from Awesome Books, which is a online bookstore um, in Britain. And they sell new and used books. And um, some for some books that I can't find here in Canada, in the libraries and online, etc., etc. Uh, it's a great resource for finding uh, hard to find books. So yeah, I've been doing a lot of hauling from the awesome books and I'm very happy with them. So uh, I think I kind of got this pile kind of mixed up. So um, I'll try to remember which ones I got from Book Outlet and, uh, and the awesome books. So uh, during their uh, $7.99 sale, uh, Book Outlet has some really good titles. <laughs> Abby's just making making the bed so she can have a nap. That's what that sound is. And um, I really do like uh, Kristen Hanna's uh, books, like The Nightingale, The Four Winds. Such good books, and I gave five stars to all of those. And this is the newest one, The Women. Now this uh, particular time period, I uh, haven't read a lot about, but of course it's a Vietnam uh, War, so I certainly know quite a bit about that. But I've never read a book um, uh, kind of revolving around the Vietnam War. And this uh, follows a nurse uh, during the Vietnam War and uh, what she saw and what she ex experienced in that. So yeah, she, uh, Kristen Hanna really does very good uh, historical novels. And uh, the other one um, from, oh, I can't remember if this was from Awesome Books or Amazon, I can't quite remember. But anyway, <clears throat> it's The Murder of Harriet Moncton by Elizabeth Haynes. And the end pages has this uh, script in there. And this is actually based on a true story uh, so supposedly, um, uh, where was this here? Um, yeah, they actually found the original coroner's reports and true witness testimonials um, from her t her teacher, uh, her would be fiance, her former landlord. Um, all these people were suspects in that. So they took, uh, she took these testimonials and sort of made a story around this. So, um, so they actually do have some chapters where it's this particular person sort of giving his testimony to it. Um, so this young woman was uh, found poisoned behind the chapel she attended in Bromley, Kent. And uh, so, yeah, they just... It was never solved, I guess, but there was quite a few different suspects in that sort of thing. So, um, so it's kind of speculative fiction, I think, though it is based on some witness testimony. So it just sounded quite like quite a fascinating story. And this one is "Murder Your Employer: McMaster's Guide to Homicide" by Rupert Holmes. So I did I didn't know too much about this. Um, but I kind of want to kind of go in blind without knowing too much because I think it's just one of those stories you just have to dive into and go with the flow. Um, so I guess there is this um, conservatory and it's for the applied arts and there's a clandestine uh, college dedicated to the fine art of murder. So it follows these three different people who uh, want to murder their employee and um, <clears throat> And uh, what occurs uh, now? I've heard this is kind of tongue in cheek. Uh, there's is, is humor in here, um, but yeah, I haven't read very many reviews. I just want to kind of go in without knowing too much. There's a gorgeous map on the front here, um, but yeah, I think it's just one of those books that you just go in and and uh, just experience it. So now this is the only one that I purchase off of Amazon. And this is The Room in the Attic by Louise uh, Douglas. And uh, so uh, 
it has two time periods. Now, I don't know if it switches back and forth or they just do one time period and then the next one. I do like when they kind of flip back and forth. Uh, so in 1903, fishermen find a wrecked boat containing a woman and a young girl. They're all taken to All Hollows, the imposing asylum deep on Dartmoor. The woman remains in a coma, but the little girl, Harriet, is taken to an attic room, is put in the care of a nurse. And then forward to 1993, it's now a boarding school, and this young boy is kind of banished to this uh, boarding school. He meets uh, this other young boy, and they um, they become marooned up in the attic. And yeah, I guess a lot of spooky things happen. So yeah, um, it's getting close to the fall. It's still hot as Hades, but the the um, uh, the night is settling in a little sooner. The it's getting a little cooler at night. And yeah, I just, I love the, I love reading anytime. Doesn't matter, but there's just something about those cold, rain, rainy kind of days with the leaves changing that just makes for great um, reading, especially paranormal or like ghost stories, witchy stories, and sort of creepy murder mysteries, gothic. Uh, so yeah, lo really looking forward to it. And this is What Feast at Night. And this is by T. Kingfisher. And this is a sequel to... Um, I believe it's a sequel to What Moves the... Bo the sorry, What Moves the Dead. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the the uh, sequel. Anyway, um, yeah, I still have to read this one, but yeah, I'm going to set these aside because these will be um, uh, very good reads uh, for the spooky autumn season. Oop. I'll put you away later. Um, alrighty, and this is another one-off book outlet, Projections by S.E. Porter. And it's a very, very creepy cover. And um, so it's kind of like a magic realism, alternate reality, I guess, fantasy. So uh, Catherine is, pays the ultimate price when she rejects a sorcerer's... Um, well, she, she just rejects him, I guess. Uh, but death isn't enough to free her. Her ghost remains attached to her obsessed murderer, even as he turns his attention to girls who remind him of her. So he continues to use his magic to kill again and again, and Catherine knows she has to find a way uh, to stop him and release her own trapped spirit in the uh, process. Um, so it does mention that it's a dark historical fantasy. It's an adult uh, historical fantasy exploring misogyny and the soul-corrupting power of unrequited love through an en enchanted lens of violence and uh, revenge. And then this is Death Under Little Sky by Stig Abel. And I believe he's a Swedish author. Um, so when Jake inherits his reclusive uncle's property in the country, the high-flying detective seizes the opportunity for a new life away from uh, London. So the new home is in this charming rural uh, surroundings and the uh, locals are a bit eccentric uh, but they're also very friendly and then a young woman's bones are discovered and he feel finds himself pulled back into the role of a detective in that so um kind of a isolated um murder mystery which um again just uh perfect for the fall and uh this is um Beautiful edition, Once a Monster by Robert Dinsdale. And it's got that beautiful copper foiling. Again, I got this on the $7.99 sale off uh, Book Outlet. And it is, um, it takes place in London in 1861. So 10-year-old Nell belongs to a crew of mudlarks. So they um, they look for valuables and that along the, the river of the Thames in London. And um, she is an orphan, and um, she ends up pulling up this um, this body on the shore. It's not the first corpse she's uh, encountered, but it's the strangest. It's seven feet tall. It's got matted hair covering his legs, 
and on his head there's a suggestion of horns in that and then kind of what follows so uh, that sounded really really good and I just absolutely love that cover and this is a botanical daughter by Noah Medlock and again a beautiful stunning cover and this follows two uh, gay gentlemen in Victorian uh, London and of course they're not accepted by society so they do live in um, uh, sort of isolation and uh, the one is a taxidermist and the other is um, he collects exotic uh, plants and grows exotic plants and then um, they discover that one plant um, has like an intellect and um, yeah, it just sounds quite fast. It's one of those kind of weird books. You kind of interpret uh, your, in your own different way. But um, yeah, it sounded really good. And Oh, i show you what I'm reading now. So I just finished kind of a, a romance in a small village. And I don't do romance too much. It wasn't too bad. But um, yeah, I just uh, really wanted to get into um, the gothic uh, mysteries and the supernatural and the witchy stuff so um, I did get this off awesome books a while ago I had hauled it and I could not find it in the libraries here online it was so expensive to ship um, and it was just so hard to find but I finally got a used copy off of awesome books and it's by Laura Purcell I have read a couple of books of hers she does gothic so so well and this is called the the whispering muse and it sort of takes place uh, around this theater and the odd happenings uh, uh, that are occurring there so yeah I'm really happy to, to finally get this so I'm just going to be starting that today and then uh, this is The Locked Door by Frieda McFadden. Now, I haven't read anything of hers. I believe she did the, is she the one that does the Housemaid series and that? Um, I haven't read any of those books. Uh, but this one, the, the synopsis sounded really interesting. So 11-year-old Nell, or sorry, Nora, um, was up in her bedroom doing homework. She had no idea that her father was killing women in the basement until the day the police arrived. So decades later, Nora's father is spending his life in, in the bars and she's become a success, successful surgeon. Um, nobody knows about her past and she'll do anything to keep it that way. And then uh, one of her young female patients is murdered killed in the same unique and horrific way that her father killed his victims. Um, so yeah, that um, sounded very, very good. And then, um, What the River Knows by Isabel Ibanez. So again, from Book Outlet um, during their sale. And this is... Um, So this young woman belongs to the upper society of 19th century Bonus Aires, uh, Argentina. And, um, and like the rest of the world, the town is steeped in old world magic that's been largely left behind or forgotten. And then she has to go to Egypt um, to look for something. And it's kind of like uh, Lara Croft and um, kind of like the... Uh, what was that movie called? The Egyptian, The Mummy. Um, so it's a combination of that. So anyway, again, it's one of those books I'll just dive into. And uh, Nikki French. Now, this is actually a, a husband and woman team, I believe. Yeah, it is. So I've read some of her, um, I think the first three in her uh series where it's that psychologist working with the police and I do I do like her murder mysteries um this is separate from that particular uh series um two families shattered by tragedy and the seekers that had been waiting decades to be revealed so yeah I really do like her uh murder mysteries and her characters and this is Bring Me Midnight by uh, Rachel Griffin, and she did The Nature of Witches, which I really, really enjoyed. Um, oh, that's the inside. He comes alive in darkness, so darkness I become. Ooh, and a 
the map. So it's a very, very beautiful addition. Um, again, I got this off the outlet. And um, her life had been planned out uh, since she was born. She's to marry the governor's son and secure an uh, alliance between the witches of her island home and the mainlanders. And um, Tana's coven has appeased those who fear their power for years by releasing most of their magic into the ocean during the full moon. Uh, but she misses the ritual and what happens after and it's it's quite a long synopsis but anyway it involves witches anyhow um yeah i do i really do like her writing i believe this is ya um but i did enjoy the nature of the the witches and darcy Coates. now i have not i do have another uh book of hers it's a really spooky haunted house kind of book which i would like to read this uh fall she i think this is a ya one though uh where he can't find you and um so abby lives in a town haunted by disappearances people vanish and when they're found their bodies have been dismembered and sewn back together in unnatural ways but is the work of a human killer or someone far uh, darker so yeah it sounds sounds like a very good spooky fall read and then this is as long as the lemon trees grow by Zulfa Katu I believe is how you pronounce it so this has gotten very very uh, good reviews and I believe um, Salam was a pharmacy student when um, the war broke out in Syria, and um, yeah, she's still she's still looking after those who um, were wounded, and um, she has PS, PTSD and just uh, everything she went through uh, before, during, and after the war. So yeah, got very very good reviews. And then um, this one had a dog on the front. <laughs> The Friend by Sig Sigrid Nunez. And, oh, what was this about again? The moving story of love, friendship, grief, healing, and the magical bond between a woman and her dog. Um, so, yeah, this woman's just going through a difficult time dealing with grief and everything, and then just kind of her relationship, I guess, with the dog and other people and that sort of thing. And this is Let the Dead Bury the Dead by Alison Epstein. And um, this takes place in St. Petersburg in 1812. Uh, yeah, it's quite a long synopsis, but it just it does follow this one per, uh, Sasha, who's a captain in the Imperial Guard, returning home. So, yeah, just um, just what happened during that uh, particular time period. And uh, this is the uh, Secrets of Rose Briar Hall um, by Kelsey James. Again, a gothic um, mystery, which I just love. Uh, so 1908 in Long Island, Millie Turner is the wife of a powerful stockbroker. Um, and she lives in a beautiful, beautiful home. And... Um, mm -mm -mm. Oh, then uh, they decide to have this big, elaborate gala with all the New York uh, social elite, and then um, something happened. I'm trying to see. Oh, the night of the event arrives in all its perfection until Millie wakes up to a cold, eerily quiet house in a gray cloud where her memory should be. So yeah, something happened, and she can't remember what happened during this very fancy gal and that. So yeah, it sounded really, really good. Alrighty, uh, not too much more here. This is uh, The Drowned City by KJ, or Karen Maitland. So I did previously show some of her books. She does historical novels, especially during like medieval times, uh, so well. And I think this is the first book in a a series that she had done and it takes place in 1606 and um, it was just after the failed gunpowder uh, plot 
and a devastating tidal wave sweeps the Bristol Channel and, um, and it follows this particular fellow. Yeah, this fellow's in prison and he has to help. Uh, I don't know. It sounds very complicated, but anyway. Um, it's, it's historical. I love her writing, so we'll figure it out. Alrighty, and then this is um, by S.J. Bolton, Sacrifice. You're born, you live, they die. Inspired by an eerie ancient legend. So this really sounded good. This is like an isolated kind of thriller mystery. So um, this a surgeon, Tora, she moves to a remote Shetland island and then she discovers this um, perfectly preserved body of a young woman, a gaping hole in her chest where her heart was uh, removed. And she also has rune marks and that, but she was found in a peat moth, like a peat bog, so most likely she um, died quite a while ago. Um, so I don't know if other murders are starting to happen or what, but anyway, it sounded like a great, I love, um, books that take place on the... Oops, so sorry. Um, my memory card was full, so I had to take some stuff off. Um, but anyway, where was I? Um, yeah, I think uh, I left off a sacrifice. Anyway, uh, the next one is a witchy book, uh, The Manning Tree Witches uh, by A.K. Blakemore. And... Um, this takes place in England in 1643, and in Manningtree, um, there's, uh, because of the Civil War, there's not a lot of men left in this particular village, and the, le the women are left to their own devices. Uh, but then Matthew Hopkins, who is uh, a real-life character, a very notorious witch hunter back then, um, comes around and starts um, accusing people of witching and how this one woman uh, fought to survive. And then, um, this is The Graces by Siobhan McGowan. And I haven't read any of her uh, books. Um, she is an Irish writer, I believe. And um, takes place in Dublin in 1918. So, Ros so Rosalind Moore is a seer and a healer. She's revered by spiritualists and she's sought after for her gifts of prophecy and healing by fashionable society. Um, and then it says, on the anniversary of her death, Pil pilgrims walk the way of the rose to St. Killen's Abbey and its tower, which has lured the rose in life. Um, although a shrine, the bell tower has seen tragedy, a heinous crime to which the monastery's once beloved abbot now in prison has confessed. And the last book is The Secret Life of Albert Entwistle by Matt Cain. So this um, actually follows Albert, who is a um, man living alone, a 64-year-old man living alone. Uh, his mother has passed away. So um, he comes back one morning from delivering the mail, and he is surprised to find a letter addressed to himself. And the contents shock him. He has no friends and nothing to look forward to. His future is very lonely and frightening. But it's not the first time that Albert has received a letter that will change his life. And this time around, he knows what he has to do. Um, this time, he has come face to face with the secret he's been hiding for nearly 50 years. So I, um, I believe um, Albert is gay and he had a relationship many, many years ago. And for whatever reason, um, uh, nothing had happened with that relationship. Um, so... Uh, he sort of sees it as his last chance to find some happiness and that sort of thing. So, um, set, sounds very sad, but inspiring too. So, that's it. That is my little haul. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited about fall coming around. I'm really tired of this heat. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm looking forward to diving more into these very uh, spooky,
spooky books. So um, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you've had a, a really good reading month and let me know what books that you have uh, been enjoying this past month. And everyone take care and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.